Thank you. Thank you very nice to be here. It's very disconcerting to see posters of myself all over pop. Experience. I think it's the first time I've been the headline act anywhere, so it's getting used to it. Um, so, as Barney mentioned, like the, the book Haiku is just out, but I also write kind of regular poetry, so I'm not going to. I'm going to mix it up and have some regular poems and some Haiku, so I hope that's okay. And we're going to start with just a few regular poems. Uh, the first one was written about um, the son of a friend of mine, um, and it's called Beavis Blessing. My shopping list is short today, so I don't bother to write it down. Besides, it's easy to remember. Bread, butter, brown flakes. B is for baby boy, snug in his buggy while we sip lattes and banter. Now we're food shopping and suddenly I'm selecting bananas and blueberries. I see Brazil nuts and boudoir biscuits and I'm compelled to grab them like some crazed resident of Sesame Street. His body is cozy from the bobble of his woolly hat to his brown booties. His eyes are blue and bright. I pass on the broccoli and there are no bird nuts to be found. I balance this by buying some beans. Butter beans, broad beans, black-eyed beans. He was born before his birthday. Our baskets are full to the brim. <laughs> Clap after everyone. Maybe after you, like, but I'm going to just read a few read a few poems and then a few haiku. So um, for each section. So but I don't expect applause after each one. So um, keep your hands on the drink instead. Um, this one's called Class of '84, and it's kind of a, a nostalgia poem, I suppose. Class of '84. We learned of Lenin's death while on the orange seats. A real star had gone out, not some celebrity. We mitched some lectures there on the cafe's orange seats. Desire was in the air and we knew just where to meet. The must-read books were swapped on those sponge-filled orange seats. No text, no mail, no web, but connection was complete. We faced recession there on the cafe's orange seats. Some emigrated far after hammering the streets. The coffee tasted grim down on the orange seats. But describing it right now, I'd call it bittersweet. And the next one actually is about a, a guy I met in college who was a bit of a character. And he was from, well, uh, the poem tells you where he's from. It's called Drum Shambo Man. He is from County Leitrim and proud of it. Lowest birth rate in the country, he says, but I'm going to change all that. This man eats his sandwich in a particular way. Holding it at the corner crust, not touching any other part, he eats from the outside edges in. Although he is not handsome, the women like him. He makes them laugh, puts them at ease. He gets away with murder. School summers spent working in Arigna mines, lunchtime underground, hands black with coal dust. The men eat their sandwiches and discard the crusts. And I'm going to inflict a few haiku on you now. Find my list. Now, since it's summertime, even though the weather hasn't been very summery, I'm going to read some summer haiku. So the, the, the book is arranged kind of alphabetically, just 26 sections from A to Z. And of course, haiku being haiku, like originated as nature poems. So. Um, and many of them would have seasonal references. So this is just a selection of summer haiku. Summer. First rain, a red blush appears on the strawberry. Third journey to the labyrinth's core, the sun breaks through. Dodging clouds and Manhattan skyscrapers, June's blue moon. Late afternoon sun, my voice, my parents' voices, singing summertime. A pause in the discussion, soft summer rain. Late summer sunshine, filtering through the heart-shaped bower. Can you all hear me okay, yeah? Yeah. Um, I have another section then, under B, I have birds and blossoms. So I thought it would be nice, because there's a lot of birds around at the moment. And, um, 
Uh, well, I live in an apartment, but I have a bird feeder on my balcony, and, and they're going through the nuts at a fierce rate at the moment. They're eating me out of house and house and home. So this is called Birds and Blossoms. Snowdrop bulbs, a seagull wheels overhead, sends out a long cry. Busy afternoon, a glance outside, magnolia flowering. Hard to tell the blossom from the butterfly this May afternoon. Prize winning poem, wagtails move in low arcs towards the podium. That was in Bally Longford, actually. I'm sure some of you have been to uh, the Canelli Festival. Waxing moon flying over the waterfall, zone my pipe. Cornflowers in this wild garden, two city eyes. Okay, I'm now going to read a few kind of watery poems. Um, yeah. So actually, I'll start with the Bally Longford one. This one was shortlisted for Bally Longford. Um, it's a while ago now, I think 2002. Um, that was a nice festival, wasn't it? I'm sure some of you did you go down to it, did you? The Canelli Festival. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is called The Swimming Women. The swimming women delight in learning new strokes. Say, please God and God bless a lot. Leave piles of worries in the changing room and find them gone after a good dip. The swimming women soak pendulous breasts and sagging bellies. Push big bums into bigger knickers. Talk easily of hysterectomies and nervous breakdowns. See you next Tuesday, please, God. <laughs> Uh, and the next one is called A Breakfast on the Cape. Now it's, it's not uh, Cape Cod, it's actually um, somewhere to burn, but anyway, it's called Breakfast on the Cape. You fetch him from another room, this grumpy faced Buddha from God knows where, with his blood red cloak and elongated ears. We face each other across your kitchen table, my sleep filled eyes level with his curled eyebrows. What has turned his mouth down so? Was it all those years languishing in lotus pose in your mother in law's loft? The lack of good company, or an excess of speech free exhalations? Or was it simply too many lifetimes of bodhisattva ennui? I chew over these questions as we boat across the lake, pass over a mountaineer rock, and turn the wind at our backs. Um, yeah, bodhisattva, some of you might know, it's somebody who's kind of wants to, uh, wants to be enlightened, but they want everyone else to be enlightened as well, and they want to help. Everyone else to become invited, so I'm sure I'm sure it's yeah. everybody. Yeah. But, that's everybody. That's everybody. Oh uh, yeah, sure. Um, they say Jesus was a bogus that actually. But anyway, Shinshke so Lela. Huh? Yeah. Let's not get into that. Okay. And this is a poem, um, a bath a bath poem. Um, but it's about when the clock um, yeah, it's summertime actually. When the clock goes the clock goes back. Somewhere, it doesn't always get mixed up. I'll go back to somewhere, yeah. Okay. So this is called Sunday Soap. I climb into the tub as the 1 a.m. news begins. The muscles loosen their grip. The clock's hand rewinds. One delicious hour, unaccounted for, lost in the cracks between the tiles. Summertime evaporating like, evaporating like the bath water, lavender scented. I'm back in the long grass behind the dunes. Away, away from parents, brothers and sisters. Sorry. <laughs> I'm dreaming and dancing Australia in Ring on Cape Clear in Ballyferreter. I'm minding kids in a plush Madrid suburb, using the pool, learning the bingo, getting brown. I'm cutting corners off dictionaries in Munich, selling ice creams to retirees on the Baltic Sea, driving through East Germany to Berlin, where my first lover will dodge the draft. I'm interrailing from north to south, from east to west, stopping off in Paris, always. Dodging mosquitoes on the Mediterranean, lying under tall sea pines outside Venice. Back in Spain, again and again, 
its baking plazas, its cool cathedrals. I'm in lovely London in a heat wave, gallery hopping by red bus and tube, drinking margaritas in LA, gin and tonics on Cape Cod. I'm lounging in Listowel, diving in Dingle, basking on Vera, <coughs> gallivanting in Galway, wandering around Westport, lilting in Leitrim, moon watching in Monaghan, thirsty in Thurless. <laughs> the leaves redden, the light darkens, the 1am bulletin ends again. It's time to pull the plug. <laughs> My list. But anyway, I'll read you some, since that's kind of about so, like all different summer memories and travelling and, and that, um, I'll read some travel haiku. So I mentioned Spain there, so I'll read um, some Spanish haiku and then some from Italy. So this is um, under I in the book. I love Spain, very imaginative. <laughs> Cathedral market, smells of incense and leather. I buy a choker. Basque flower market, an orange hibiscus trumpets its presence. Waiting for the bus, several stemfuls of cherry heaven. On the back of this coin, the famous cathedral I visited today. Full moon fiesta, dancing on the beach, shadows of palm trees. Back by the Liffey, shells from Chipiona Strand jangle in my bag. And uh, these are the Italian ones. I tell him I'm alone, the look of horror on the gondolier's face. Tall sea pine, please don't drop your cones on me. Summer afternoon, sun on the Adriatic, this wartime bunker. Piazza, ho piazza hopping, church crawling, I stumble into a mass. A bin truck blocking my view of St. Peter's, rosary beads up front. This morning's rain drained off inside the Pantheon. <coughs> now I'm going to go all around to is that alright? Yeah. With a couple of sonnets. <laughs> and then before you get too loved up, then there'll be a breakup poem then after that, right? <laughs> so, this first sonnet is called Fabulous. <clears throat> Before I drift into a deeper sleep, as jaded mind succumbs to drowsy mist, there is one matter I would like to keep, the twist of your hair in my knuckled fist. I would be married by your boyish laugh, its coy contagion travelling the throat, a chocolate kiss upon a double raft, spontaneously overboard afloat. The tempests tend to take us unawares, and lightning strikes us when we least expect it. But still in all, we're not too easily scared in this dream of blue waves weathering true grit. Awake to find your tresses in my hand with promise of a passage to dry land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Good.